Thank you for joining us for our daily devotions today. Today we're going to be kind of bouncing around following a theme that we have started really yesterday, asking this question, what does God want us to know in the midst of this crisis? And so take a moment and ask the Lord's blessing on our time in his word. Join me in just a minute in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5 and 6, where we will join together after you hit play again. So take a moment, ask the Lord's blessing, and then join me in just a second. All right, Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5 and 6, we are going to get into this idea that we find throughout Scripture, and really the idea is that we are not alone. It's a discouraging time. It is a depressing time. Christ did not leave the disciples alone. That was their cry in Mark chapter 4, as they were drowning. Lord, do you not care that we are drowning, that we are going to perish? Jesus made sure that they arrived safely on the other side, Mark chapter 5, verse 1. But we also recognize that there was some teaching in the middle of that where Jesus confronts their fear and challenges them to replace that fear with a fear of who he is, not their circumstances, not the world around them. Perhaps in the middle of this COVID crisis, that is what the Lord is teaching us. We place our trust in our friends and our neighbors. We place our trust in our possessions and our abilities to gather wealth, the strength that we have to do that work, which we saw also on uh, Sunday and during our live stream. And so we recognize that there is this tendency that we have to look to temporal things. The writer of Hebrews is going to push us beyond that. He says this in Hebrews 13, Verse 5, he says, Keep your life free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can confidently say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man can do to me. The writer of Hebrews is quoting from the Old Testament, and we're going to see that in just a moment. There's some ideas that come out, but we see this phrase repeated throughout Scripture. We find it many times where we are told not to fear, not to. Uh, be afraid of what is around us because the Lord has not left us, nor has he forsaken us. Of this passage, Andrew Murray writes this when he says, Our earthly and heavenly life are more closely linked than we know. Too much interest in or attachment to earthly things inevitably weakens our hold on God. True fellowship with God at once brings us into the right relation to earthly things. That's what the writer of Hebrews is saying. He is reminding us that we are attached too closely to those earthly things. We're too concerned about those things that we need, we think we need. We believe that we are the only ones who can provide. And so we begin to understand this instruction that we are to be dependent upon our great God. So we've been asking the question, what does God want us to know in the midst of the COVID crisis? Well, we've learned a lot. We've studied a lot of examples of what we need to be doing. And today we're going to add one more element to that that we have flirted with throughout the last two and a half weeks. Our dependency is on our great God. Your clothes will wear out. Your bank account will go to zero, possibly, and maybe already there. Your job is by no means secure. The very breath you breathe is not guaranteed to you. It may be filled with pollutants. It may be filled with poison. We recognize that this would give us a fatalistic mindset if we only dwelled there, that only bad can happen. But that is not where the Lord leaves his followers in the New Testament time, nor in the Old Testament time. In fact, the writer of Hebrews here is most likely going back to Deuteronomy chapter 31, or at least Joshua chapter 1. But since we studied Deuteronomy on Sunday, let's go back to Deuteronomy chapter 31. And we're going to dig into this verse that we find here in Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 7. And the scripture there says this, Then Moses summoned Joshua to him in the sight of all the Israel, Be strong and courageous, for you shall go with his people into the land that the Lord has sworn to their fathers to give them, and you shall put them in possession of it. It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Here is the very end of the second giving of the law. We studied the very beginning of this book in chapter 8 on Sunday, and we see Moses saying, Remember the commandments. Remember all that God has done. Establish these memorials in your life and remember them and follow them. As Moses is now preparing to say goodbye to the people of Israel, 
He pulls Joshua aside and says, Joshua, what you're about to do is going to be difficult. Do not fear. Do not be dismayed, for the Lord is with you. This would make such an impact on Joshua that he would say it in Joshua chapter 1, verse 5. He would repeat it to the people as they were preparing to go into the land, now under his authority, under his leadership. So it made an impact. And it was something that Joshua would hold on to because he would repeat it again at the end of his days. We also see in Isaiah, and we begin first in Isaiah chapter 41, where the scripture there says this, Isaiah 41 verse 10. The scripture says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Beloved, what a great joy to know, uh, even though this is a statement made to the nation of Israel in their time of trying, that even in the midst of adversity, and especially in the midst of adversity, the presence of God is more intensely felt and known. Again, Isaiah would write in Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 through 7, these words, But now thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the, fo- and the flame shall not consume you. I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt as your ransom, Cush and Seba, in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. I give men in return for you and people in exchange for your life. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and from the west. I will gather them to you. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my son from afar and my daughters from the end of the earth, everyone who is called by my name, whom I have created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Now we know very clearly that the Lord is speaking to the nation of Israel, and those are promises that are specifically for the nation. However, we also see God's tender care and compassion in the midst of great suffering. We see this oftentimes when suffering would come upon Israel for their own sin. God would often also tailor the judgment statement with the reminder that he is there, that he is faithful, and that he will see them to the end. In the New Testament... We see these same truths undertaken. We saw it here in Hebrews chapter 13, for which we'll return in a moment. But we also see it as the Lord has given this great commission to go to the ends of the earth, to take the gospel, to train those who come to know Christ as Savior, to follow all of the commands that Christ has commanded us. And then listen to those words as Matthew 28, 19 and 20, And lo, I am with you always to the end of the age. We recognize that we do not live a life separate from or out of the reach of our great God and Savior. So when the writer of Hebrews says in in Hebrews chapter 13, uh, verse 5, to keep your life free from the love of money and be content with what you have, for he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Our confidence does not come from the possessions we own. It doesn't come from our friendships. It's easy to be discouraged with the economy the way that it is today, with so many thousands, millions of people out of work, it would be easy for us if our confidence was just in our possessions or if our confidence was just in our friends. We would be depressed. We would be discouraged. The writer of Hebrews does not leave us there. He says that is not where your confidence lies. You have one who is walking with you in the midst of the COVID crisis, and he will never leave you, nor will he forsake you. And our testimony to that, our evidence of that, is Hebrews chapter 11. All of those who have walked by faith in difficult times, uncertain days, they didn't walk in confidence of their possession, their riches, or their wealth. They walked in faith and obedience, and that is where they found their joy. So today, as we learn what it means to have no fear, let us be those who fear the one who we ought to, that is the Lord, and that fear is a reverential, awe-struck fear. Let us not fear COVID-19. 
Let us be those who drive passionately to serve faithfully, to advance in the midst of this age, that Christ would be glorified and that he alone would be lifted above all names. Again, we leave with Andrew Murray's words here in Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5 and 6. He says this, A promise of God, such as we have here, is meant for the hour of trial. Everything may at times appear very dark. We cry and no answer comes. It's almost, it almost looks as if God has forgotten us. Let, in the fullness of faith, the voice of the cloud of witnesses, all bidding us to be of good courage, And to wait patiently, enter your hearts, and let us say, He has said, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope, that it wavers not. For he is faithful, that promised, and boldly say, The Lord is my helper, I will not fear. It is easy for us to be depressed in these days. Let us rise with a strong countenance to know that our great God is near. And he will not leave us nor forsake us. Beloved, be of good courage today. We pray that as you enter into this next month of isolation, that God would bless you and keep you immensely. Be advancing for the sake of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We will see you Sunday. We have two days of devotions with Pastor Brandon now. And so make sure you tune in for that. I will see you on Sunday morning. Uh, Should the Lord allow us to join together in such a way as the live stream, we welcome you to that ministry. We pray that you will bring some friends with you through the social media networks and so forth. But until we meet again, may the Lord bless you and keep you. We love you and stay safe.